And our next speaker, um, who will continue the international outlook, is uh, Mr. Sam, Mend Sam Deckman from uh, uh, Circular Flanders. And uh, Sam is a communication officer and community manager. You have to explain that to me. What's in a name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, he will present what's uh, the program Circular Flanders uh, in Belgium. Uh, which has just taken off, but has a background in the former materials program of Flanders. Mm -hmm. So please, Sam. Okay. <laughs> so my job is a community manager or communication officer. Um, my job within Circle of Flanders is to spread the word uh, about our work, uh, to make the story and to make it accessible towards our public. Um, First of all, Circular Flanders is uh, the public-private partnership a platform to boost circular economy within Flanders in Belgium. Um, why not Circular Belgium? Well, it's a political fact um, in our country that Flanders is a quite autonomous region within Belgium, which is a federal state, and Flanders has the competence for waste and materials, so circular economy is a competence of the Flemish region. That's why we're talking about Circular Flanders, that's why I'm on the payroll of the Flemish government. What I would like to talk about is uh, the path to Circular Flanders and our predecessor, just in short, a brief situation. Um, why? Uh, the how, what is our toolkit, what are the tools we use, uh, our weapons to, to make change, and three key concepts or three keys for success in public-private partnerships. We are a public-private partnership. We are collaborating with uh, business associations, civil society, academics, um, finance institutions, and it seems to be working. And we defined three factors we think are uh, key to success. So why Circle of Flanders? This is Flanders at the heart of Europe. Um, we are surrounding Brussels, a uh, very densely populated region, actually an exploded city, so to say. Um, we have several economic strengths, mainly logistics, big ports, chemical industry surrounding, surrounding or concentrated around the big ports, mainly Antwerp, which is number two uh, in Europe. Um, there's a food industry concentrated around agriculture, very intensive agriculture. We have engineering, health and life sciences clusters organized around our main universities, the University of Leuven and Ghent. As I said, densely populated. This is just a, a scheme of the built environment in Flanders. So it's just scattered all the way around. Exploding cities, um, exploding towns, towns being linked by towns, roads, people live alongside the roads. So everywhere are houses in Flanders. So in general, we have no space to waste and we have no space for waste. So landfills, we cannot have landfills anymore in Flanders because there is, it's always in a backyard from someone's. Another problem in Flanders, of course, we don't have resources. It's a small patch of land. Um, this is a scheme um, one of my colleagues made when he, he was thinking about the resource scarcity problem globally. And he took the, as reference his daughter, who was born in 2010. And he was thinking, well, in her lifespan, how will um, critical resources evolve in her life? Uh, for instance, uh, uranium will last until her marriage and then probably there will be a problem. Of course, the reality is more complex than this scheme, but it's, it's, it's a nice eye-opener for, for uh, in speeches and presentations to show public there is some problem, some issue. Um, another issue is, of course, the, the, the scarcity is concentrated in Europe, and yeah, in our region there are no resources. So we have no space to waste, we have no space, and we have no resources, so we need to be careful with our materials. Another um, critical factor is that our economy is very open. A lot of import and export and our uh, SMEs um, depend a lot on new resources, um, which account for 40% of their costs. So we're vulnerable. Enter OVAM. OVAM is our mothership, so to say. We are embedded within the OVAM. Circle of Flanders is embedded in OVAM. OVAM is a public waste agency of Flanders working on waste management, materials management, soil sanitation, cleaning up the country, so to say. Um, as I said, relation to the federal government of Belgium, Belgium is responsible for everything about consumer goods, product norms, market regulation. Um, we at Flanders are responsible for management of waste and materials and 
circular economy. And the circular economy for Ovam is a logical next step in moving upstream. Um, Ovam cleaned up uh, landfills, dump sites, organized regulations for waste, organized a recycling economy, organized um, reuse shops, and the next step is really moving upstream and making preventing waste at the source, making better products, eco-design, reuse, remanufacture, you know the, the story. So uh, it's, it's a next step and Circular Flanders is one of those next steps. And this is another scheme to show why it's a logical step. This is um, the treatment of household waste in Flanders, where you see there is a stabilization in the total volume of waste, which is a good story, but we want to see less waste. And so we need to move upstream because we are meeting the limits of our waste management. We are already sorting 70% for recycling, incinerating probably the rest, and there is near, ze near zero landfilling in Flanders. But we are, yeah, there, are, there is no margin for growth, so we need a different approach. We need to move upstream, take on the circular economy. This is how we provide that idea. You have the linear economy, which is business as usual. You have the recycling economy, which is fairly developed in Flanders. We have to move one step further, more radical, more visionary towards the circular economy. That's our job. How do we do that? This is um, the policy toolkit. It's not complete, but it's ind indicative of what a government can do. Here are the classical tools, the classical weapons of a government. Regulate, sanction, fines, close down businesses when they don't um, follow the rules. For instance, prohibition of landfilling, uh, product norms, stuff like that. You have fiscal and trade policy. Um, levying taxes on, for instance, uh, virgin materials would be a kind of idea for Europe. Or uh, lowering VAT, uh, VAT for uh, recycled content products. The government could provide services like what OVAM is currently doing. They have built a calculation tool for architects and designers. When they want to build a building, you can put in your materials, your parameters, your dimensions into the system, and the system calculates a kind of circularity score. Of course, that's very complex, and as we said, indicators, it's a big issue. It's not perfect, but it's an indicator. People get an idea of the reusability or the recyclability of materials they put into the building. Another idea is uh, provide infrastructure, build recycling parks, build take-back schemes, uh, organize the cycles. Subsidize, support, invest is really pushing forward initiatives you want to see growing. Sensitize is the classical, um, yeah, sensitizing the public, the broader public, education. And co-create, matchmake is the more soft side um, about co-creation, collaboration with private parties. And so the more you go to the right, that's our business, that's our core business. We at Circle of Flanders work on these things. We don't have these tools, these hard tools at our disposal. We work on the soft side, talking to people, convincing people, taking front runners along, de-risking de experiments and stuff like that. Um, we had a predecessor. We are working since 2011 um, on sustainable materials management in a former Flanders Materials Program, which had three pillars, policy action, entrepreneurial discovery, meaning experimenting, visionary work, and policy research. The program was rewarded with a circular award at Davos. So it was a good program. Um, there is a healthy rivalry with, uh, within Flanders and the Netherlands about who is doing best in circular economy. We often say to ourselves, the Dutch people, they do the talking, we do the working. Hence the award, and we want to get on that map of Citra as well as a hotspot. Since 2017, we merged all those pillars into one single platform, Circle of Flanders. Um, I promised uh, Johan to be concrete and make to, to, to tell about concrete stories. Um, for instance, what we have is a, a project called Flanders Recycling Hub, which is a project where we um, research the feasibility of transforming the port of Antwerp towards a recycling hub and um, feeding recycling companies um, with waste streams from all over the world. For instance, we have the company Umicore, uh, you have a Swedish competitor Boliden, um, 
they recycle precious metals out of electronic waste and batteries, so they are looking how can we pull streams towards Antwerp. We had a study about jobs in the circular economy, how much jobs, which kind of jobs. This was interesting, the Additive Design Challenge. We launched the challenge among designers, product developers, to uh, see what is 3D printing technology, what does it mean for circular economy? How can you avoid that people will make more rubbish with their 3D home printers? How can we make it a meaningful technology for circular economy? How can we close loops? How can we build business models that generate loops? So to say the product comes back to the producer at the end of the life or when it's broken. We also have a masterclass circular entrepreneurship where we help uh, business owners, SMEs, forward with their thinking about circular economy. Uh, these are tools we've built, online tools, offline tools for educational purposes, business model innovation tool, uh, the close the loop tool for specifically the fashion sector um, and textile manufacturers, which is actually a master's thesis in itself, from uh, loads of content, tips and tricks, 365 cases, one a day, about circular fashion. How can you make the fashion industry circular? Um, we've done a lot of communication work, um, mainly within, within our region, like working for the Flemish um, businesses and audience and public. Especially interesting might be the Reberg project. Reberg is um, an attempt to make the, the vague theoretical concepts of circular, econ circular economy uh, tangible for people. So we visualized a city in the year 2050, fictional, and we visualized the life in that city and how would people make stuff, how would they buy stuff, how would they live in the city. And we made little movies and we made characters living in that city. And it seemed to be so real that we often got uh, requests from people, could we hire that fictional person? They didn't know it was fictional. Could we hire him or her for a presentation at our, at our, uh, at our event? Or someone else asked, I didn't find Reberg on the Google Maps, where is it? So it worked. <laughs> um, after this was Flanders materials program, then came Circular Flanders. This is what we are. So the main thing is we are a, a, a combination of organizations all across society making commitments to action. That last one is, is important beyond paper, beyond roadmaps. Um, as Citra does as well, you, you, you can make a roadmap, you can make a plan, but you have to make real projects and, and show people real potential. This is how we are governed. Important here is we have two ministers who are responsible. So a circular economy is well understood to be as well as an environmental team, as well as an in economic or innovation team. And these are our main partners. 17, I've got 16, this is an old slide. We have 17 partners from across society, as I said. Business associations, academics, local governments, um, science, uh, um, civil society, and governments. And then the three key successes or factors for success as we and our team um, define them. Me personally, um, I was skeptical at the 1st of January when we started Circle of Flanders. I was skeptical about that idea of a partnership. I thought, in the end, um, it's nice to be a partner of Circle of Flanders. On paper, you put your logo on our website and that's that. And the real work would be done by the, the team that is on the payroll of Circle of Flanders, meaning those 13 people. And they would have the work to push circular economy forward and do the work, but it turned out it's differently. So all of our, and I'm going back, all of our partners are really taking up this story and making it their own, with their own angle. So for instance, we have Agoria, which is the uh, business association of technological businesses, companies. They took up circular economy from their own angle, meaning technology, and they have focused, they have uh, organized a learning network on remanufacturing, on uh, electronics, so they are really looking in the technological spectrum of circular economy. You have this one, this is Transition Network uh, Civil Society. They took on circular economy from a societal perspective and they are looking into the role of civilians and local communities in circular economy. What does it mean for them? Um, we also have Go for Circle, which is the business association of recyclers. Those recyclers as well, they are thinking about their role in the future. What would be our role? Will we be merely recycling waste or will we be 
material consult consultants? Would we go to our clients and say, you better use this product or this product should be separated? So they move upstreams. They are thinking about moving upstreams. And so to, to keep it short, every actor is really taking up the story and moving on and building its own projects around circular economy. It's not something centralized in our team as I feared at the beginning. And so why does it work? Because there's a shared ambition and a shared success. When something goes well, our partners reap the fruits as well. They get the benefits as well. Secondly, uh, there's clarity. There is a single focal point and a single yeah, point in Belgium uh, or Flanders, circular Flanders. There used to be a scattering of organizations and pillars. Nobody knew who to call when they wanted to know something about circular economy. Now we have circular Flanders as one focal point who can dispatch questions to the experts or the proper organizations. And last, engagement and really willingness to act on all levels, as I said before, with those partners who are really building projects. Just about that ambition, um, our government has made circular economy one of the seven transition priorities for 2050. This is on paper, but it's important that it's on paper at least. Um, we have two ministers who are accountable for circular economy and it is used as a flywheel for the innovation policy. So we are closely linked to innovation policy. This is important that this is on paper, that the government signed this, this is important. We concretized or we made it concrete, these ambitions in a kickoff statement where we bundled the efforts of our partners and ourselves into one statement which explains what we will be doing the couple of years. This is again paperwork, but important. Mainly our topics will be uh, circular procurement, where we want to activate the millions of uh, money of euros um, being spent by governments to create a market pool, um, creating a demand for circular products within governments. Circular cities is our second topic, where we want to work on the spatial aspects of circular economy, reusing space, which we don't have, reusing buildings, and involving citizens. And the third, is of course circular business, how can we de-risk experiments, how can we help SMEs forward, how can we fund projects, how can we um, help them with hurdles or legislation. And then that's the ambition on the paper. Then the real projects with shared success, for instance this is uh, our Green Deal circular procurement, um, where we gathered now 150 parties, public-private, companies, organizations from civil society, governments, local municipalities, um, they all pledged in a Green Deal, they signed, they all pledged to organize two purchasing experiments within their companies. So in total we um, generated 200 experiments on circular procurement within this group for the next coming, for the coming two years. And they also pledge to share their learnings with each other. So there will be a learning network and everybody can share their projects and their lessons learned so we don't have to invent everything again and make the same mistakes again within the group. Why is this a shared success or why does it work? Because we gave the stage to all those organizations. We put ourselves at the background. They could literally get the spotlights. The people were tweeting, were making selfies, were taking photographs of their CEO signing the Green Deal, for instance. They were asking for photos, issuing press releases. So they were the stars of the day and they really made it on the social media, made it hot and talked about their participation. We didn't have to do it, they did it because they got the, the credits for the work. Another example of shared success is uh, the Beterhem workshop. Um, Beterhem, bestly, best translated as Betterville or Betterberg. Um, it's originated from this Reberg project, which I mentioned, the visionary project. Um, there was criticism from civil society organizations that it was too technically oriented, too technological, too clean, too business oriented, and not social and not warm enough. And so, together with those civil society organizations, we sat around the table and we designed a workshop for broad audience, for public, um, for civilians, so to say. And we, dub, we named it um, Beterhem, and it's a, it's a workshop where people can participate and move into a fictional future, and by gaming and learning about scenarios of the future, they can learn about possibilities and get a yes we can idea. 
because they all know the, the problems of climate change and stuff like that, and problems, 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 but we want to give, a, give them a workshop with a positive future outlook, and it works. People respond positively to that. Next phase is 2018, where this workshop will be rolled out throughout Flanders with 60 um, runs, with each 40 to 50 participants. So we think we would get maybe 3,000, we would reach 3,000 people with this workshop, 3,000 people who will think for two hours about circularity, sustainability, social, social justice. And so from criticism, we, we created a shared project, which is now the main, the core business for this civil society organization in 2018. And so they are selling the concept. We work together with them, but they are taking it along. And this, is, this has become their project. Another example, the close the loop tool for circular fashion industry. I explained it. Our partner is Flanders DC for fashion, which is a government agency working for fashion and design industry. They have taken this tool and made it their own. We built it together, but they made it their own, and they made it their own story, and they are organizing presentations and workshops around this. And now they are making a spin-off of the tool specifically for the design sector, for eco-design or circular design. And so they are taking along an idea which we generated together, but they're taking it along within their work. So that's the general idea of what I want to say with shared success. Let your partners move along with ideas work them out together and let them live their own life, plant the seeds and let it grow, and it seems to work. Secondly, clarity, single focal point, can be short on this one. We are, it helps to be mandated by the government as the go-to uh, point. Uh, we used to be three pillars, as I said, scattered. Now there is one focal point, one point where you go with your questions for circular economy, and then we'll dispatch. Um, this is how we look at that role. We have Circle of Flanders here with our partners, which shows the direction, the ambition, who creates the vision. And then you have all kinds of projects from different actors throughout society who move along the same side, sometimes connected to us, sometimes just independent, but there's some common understanding of the direction. There is a momentum for circular economy. And we don't manage everything, we, we support and we drive and then action on all levels, um, meaning doing things on a terrain, really changing stuff and throwing money at it and <laughs> making it happen just beyond paper. Um, I already said we have two ministers who are investing quite some money yearly. Uh, our partners are pulling um, euros as well in their own projects and in our projects, shared projects. As I said, circular procurement, we will have 200 pilot projects, worth a lot of money. We had three open calls um, this summer, and within three months we gathered with our colleagues um, 145 project proposals. That's a lot, and it was across civil society, from across businesses, civil society, academics, so um, it was a broad range of projects, again. Um, to move forward the circular economy on a broad spectrum, not just businesses or technology, just the whole society. And it's worth a lot. The private financing of those projects is at least the same as what we will uh, cover. And uh, as I said, with those small triangles, numerous actors are taking up projects independently in Flanders without our help, sometimes talking to us, sometimes not. That's no problem. These are our ministers, these are the partners, you know them, this is what you know. This is interesting, this is our case database, um, which we are renewing right now. Um, we, ha we will have a new website soon. These are cases from Flanders and Belgium in general, um, which we use as an illustration to show the, the diversity of the project that was uh, sent in. Our subsidized projects will be um, um, taken over in our case database as well, so you can find this on our website soon. Um, just to show um, the initiatives, examples of initiatives that are happening um, with or without our support. For instance, Long Live Electro, Long Live Electro was a, a campaign done by a civil society organization where people could send in their stories about consumer electronics goods that had a very, very long lifetime, for instance, a washing machine that lasts for 50 years or a hairdryer that lasts for 10 years, then they could show their product, take a picture and tell the story. And that was a 
a nice way to uh, talk about planned obsolescence or early obsolescence. Um, a more harsh or harder way is trap kapot, broken too soon, is the translation. It's from the Consumers Association. They had a, a notification point where people could complain about products that went, that broke too soon, and they are analyzing those products and detecting suspicious products who are repeatedly uh, notifi notified to break too early. Simplify Life is an example of uh, another NGO that is working on decluttering your life and um, dematerialization, making your life simpler with, uh, with less stuff, and so on. D so this is just a grab of initiatives in Flanders going on. What I'm not talking about is our companies. We have interesting companies, as of course. This is the last one, uh, Young Potentials. We had a boot camp with uh, young graduates or even yeah, students who are still studying at uh, universities or colleges. And we gathered them for one week and worked with them for long days on circular economy challenges in the city of Antwerp. And so they worked on those challenges, generated a lot of energy, and it resulted in a concrete proposal to start a bus uh, uh, business with those uh, youngsters. They applied for funding from our program as well. We'll see whether they get the funding or not. But uh, the idea is to harness that energy of that week and pull it further and make a new boot camp next year and so on. So we want to reach out to youngsters. The educational pillar is starting with this. We're still building on that. Voila, that's us. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> we have time for um, one question. Uh, Sam will be around for the whole day this afternoon as well. So um, just grab him if you have uh, longer questions or more extensive questions. But we have time for one question, please. Um, sorry, I, I, I may have forgotten, but how long are you running Circular Flanders for? It's uh, Now a year, yeah. But, but uh, the for, for how much longer? Well, undefined. Undefined. Oh, okay. The target is 2050. <laughs> oh, okay. But we hope to be. Yeah. We don't know. It's evolving. So, the, the the previous structure lasted for six years. Maybe this structure will last for five years, and something new comes along. Some new challenges. Some new organizational form will be required. So, we don't know. But funding is in indefinite. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.